Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Bloodhound's Fang. Now the Bloodhound's Fang is often described as a very good early game weapon. Although not a lot of people talk about it after early game. You'll get some people say that it's a very good bleed weapon. It's not really true. It's not a great bleed weapon. It only has 55 bleed and it doesn't scale with arcane so you can't increase it further without using weapon buffs. If it's a good early game weapon. Why don't people talk about it late game? One of the reasons, I suspect, is that it uses a very unique stat spread, which not many weapons actually utilize. That's going to be a quality stat spread, which is generally pretty bad in Eldering, just due to the amount of stats that you need to invest for a weapon to do good damage. So, at 150, you're looking about a 40-60 split in strength and dexterity. Of course, this kind of depends on how much armor and HP you want. The optimal way to use a curved greatsword is going to be power stanced. Bloodhound's Fang has a unique effect in that it has a higher motion value on the two hand and one hand jumping attacks. That's not really relevant, but it's something to keep note of if you do happen to want to use it and don't have another one lying around. Getting another one does require a new game plus or trading. To utilize the Bloodhound's Fang effectively, you would want to prioritize jumping attacks, and since the Curved Greatsword has high DPS using power stance attacks, you would also want to use something like the Twin Blade Talisman to boost your attacks. Twin Blade Talisman was recently buffed in this patch, and it does have some use now. Not a ton of use, but in niche cases like this, it is actually a good talisman. So, if you can only get the two Bloodhounds Fang in New Game Plus, assuming you're playing offline, how does it stack up? How does it compare to the New Game Plus bosses? Well, it cleaves through them like butter. It is a very hard-hitting weapon, especially since you can stack damage buffs with it very easily. It can cleave through the Elden Beast in just a few hits, get it down to half HP. That is very impressive for a weapon that not many people seem to mention. Now for the mathematically correct build. We're going to be level 150 as that's the level most people seem to stop at for going into New Game Plus. We're going to have 60 Vigor, that's the Vigor soft cap. We're going to have base mind. Mind's not needed for this build, although the weapon art is still good. You can use it as a good defensive tool to both attack and get out of dodge. We're going to have 31 endurance. That's the endurance we need to equip the armor that gives us the poise we want. We're going to have 48 strength, which is going to go to 50 with the Omen Spark mask. And then we're going to have 55 dexterity, which turns into 60 with the Millicent's prosthesis. This is the optimal stat spread for our level. And for the armor, we have Omen's Work Mask, Raptor's Black Feathers to boost our jumping attacks, Crucible Gauntlets, and Tree Sentinel's Greaves. And together that's going to give us 51 poise, which is the most important PvE breakpoint for poise. For Talismans, we're going to have the Claw Talisman, as that's also going to boost our jumping attacks. The Twin Blade Talisman, which was recently buffed in 1.09, so that's going to give us a 45% increase to our final L1 damage. For our third Talisman, we have the Millicent's Prosthesis, that's going to give us 5 Dexterity as well as increase our continuous attack. With Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, we are going to get a greater benefit to increased attack than Millicent's provides, however we don't have the 5 Dexterity. For the Great Rune, we have either Radon's Great Rune or Morgoth's Great Rune, it is up to you. I personally did not need the extra stamina or FP, so I went with more gots for the greater HP pool. For the crystal tier, we have Opline Hard tier and Thorny Crack tier. Opline Hard tier is going to give us greater damage negation, and Thorny Crack tier is going to again provide greater multi-hit attack boosts. 